and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to be a witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to be a witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Christ is the true light, and then he lighteth every man. He gives light to every man that comes into the world. And then as you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and he lightens, and he, and he gives you light, you reflect the light of Christ. In John chapter 8, verse 12. John 8, verse 12. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have, shall have the light of life. Shall have the light of life. You see, when you come to the Lord and you are linked up by grace, by faith, through the cleansing of the blood of the Lamb, you are linked up with Jesus, the light of the world, then you will not walk in darkness anymore because you have the light. In John chapter 12, John 12, verse 36. John chapter 12, verse 36. While ye have light, believe in the light, that she may be the children of light. You see, your coming to Christ makes you to have this intimate relationship with Christ the light. It says, while you have him, and while you have opportunity of believing in him, believe. That she may be the children of light. Verse 46. I am come a light into the world. That whosoever believeth on me shall not abide in darkness. You see what the Lord is telling us? He's telling us that as we believe in him, we do not remain in darkness. Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. We're then to reflect. The light of the Lord Jesus Christ. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 8. For ye were sometimes darkness, ye were in the past before you knew the Lord. But now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For you come to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, darkness passes away. The darkness of ignorance, all that will pass away. And the darkness of sin, all that will pass away. And now you walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Romans chapter 13. In Romans chapter 13, reading from verse 11. Romans 13, verse 11. And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is past spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. And let us put on the armor of light. Because now we come to the Lord. We're born again. We're converted. We have been poor in spirit. We have mourned. For the rebellion, disobedience, and sin in the family, in the community, and in the land. We we'll become meek and gentle, humble, and lowly. Not only that, we are passionately sought after the righteousness and the purity of heart and life. And then we we'll become merciful and we we'll become pure in heart. And then we we'll become peacemakers. Because of all those experiences we have in the Lord and with the Lord, it says, the bottom line, the conclusion, the corollary to that, and uh, uh, what follows after that is that now we put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly, as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envy. Now, when it said in verse 12, cast off. The works of darkness. What's the work of darkness? That's what it says in verse 13. Royalty. Royalty. 
It's a work of darkness. You know what they do in the world? Whenever the uh, leadership in the world, maybe the political leaders, whenever they are taking a decision that the, um, the people in the land don't say that they want to agree with, they, only, they know only one way to turn the leadership away from the path they are taking, and it's royalty. But in many other ways, there's dialogue, there's talking together, there's writing, and the newspapers are there that you can use, and they could bring out, you know, reasons why this should not be, and write in an appealing way, or they could send delegates to the leadership, they could do that, but they will not do that. And they will not allow dialogue to make any change in the policies in their country. They will rather riot and destroy things that are worth millions of their currency. Before, whether the government will change or not, already lives are destroyed already. Many, many bad things will have happened. And the Lord is saying in the church, we cast off the works of darkness. And part of the work of darkness is rioting. If you feel that the leadership is taking a decision, or is making a policy, or is having a particular practice, it's not a simple thing. It's just that maybe you feel the policy is not convenient. Maybe there's an alternative. Dialogue. Dialogue. You can come. We have counseling sessions, and you're straightforward. You're not acting like, uh, you know, the emissary of Joab. What I mean by emissary of Joab? Um, you know, David had disciplined Absalom because Absalom had to run away when he orchestrated the killing of one of the sons in the family. And then he ran away, and Job wanted to get at the heart of David. And instead of coming directly and saying, King, we understand, we agree with you. In fact, we have even tried normally. Anybody who kills another one, like Absalom did, he should have been killed. And you have the authority and the power to have taken that young man to just kill him all. It's not above the law, but to allow him to live. And now he's in the other place. Since you have shown this mercy halfway, David King, with all due respect, this is dialogue. Why don't you get him back and allow him to be his son again in the family? Joab didn't do that. And Joab employed a woman and put words in her mouth to tell lies and to cook up story. And then came to David and said this, this, and this. David was not a psychologist, but David had the spirit of God and said, woman, tell me the truth. I'm asking you a question. This story you are telling me is not the hand of Joab in this. And that woman said, my Lord, O King, you are as an angel of God. Joah put these words in my mouth. We know when that is done, we're not that stupid, we're not that foolish, we're not that dark. But why don't you come directly? Why do we use the methods of the people of the world? Why do you have to use the method of Joah? And it doesn't work. And you see, when you do that, and you're talking to an intelligent leader, and I know that this is Joab's servant, this is Joab's slave. You don't have a mind of your own. It's Joab that sent you to come and tell me that. And that's not that you have been blessed with this powerful message. Our bottom, our address is at the bottom of the uh, of the screen. I believe you will join us one of this Sunday to worship together. Thank you. God bless you. Let us pray. Our mighty Father. We glorify your name and thank you, Lord, because of this powerful message. I pray by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, you will touch those people who are in need of salvation, those people who are in need of prosperity, those people who are in need of healing. And the power, by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, they will give testimony because of this message. In Jesus' name we pray. Say one more time, say.